Hi everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, welcome to, so we're gonna create a setup today. And what I wanna do is just give you a quick look at what the setup would look like um, while I change over to my Event Master tool set and prepare all of that, right? So that's ready to go. So here's the set, here's the gag. We got a widescreen destination, we have a side screen, we have an auxiliary destination that we're gonna set up. Now, uh, it's not specified here on the setup on our quick drawing, right, on our quick drawing, but what the widescreen is, is essentially, a, it's a large canvas of 3840 by 1080. It utilizes two 1920 by 1080 uh, outputs, and those are gonna be overlapped 600 pixels to create a effective canvas of 3240 by 1080. Um, and we're going to use one of our MacBook Pros as the wide background for that, the native background. So we're gonna set that to 3840 by 1080. We're gonna use a couple of MacBook Pros as sources. Uh, and then we're going to, um, uh, we're gonna set up a camera as well. We've got a little in-room camera over there set up. Um, so we're also going to set up the multi-view for that, which you'll, which you'll see you know, bounce up uh, periodically uh, as well as, as, a, as a, that side screen. So, we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through that. And in order to, to do these setups, we do this, this, this awesome thing called uh, uh, BIOS. We have this acronym called, uh, we call it BIOS, uh, which stands for uh, backgrounds, inputs, outputs, screens, and save. And actually what we, you know, we say BIOS, but what we actually mean is backgrounds, save, input, save, output, save, screens, save. We wanna save after every step, right? It's important to save after every step because if you do not save after every step and somehow you lose power at the venue or, or something, you know, maybe negative happens that you didn't want to have in, a, a, you, you'll lose all of your progress as you're going along, right? So um, essentially we, we try to beat it into you to make the habit of saving after every step. So BS, IS, OS, so on, so forth. Okay. So. Uh, one of the first things we want to do is switch over to Event Master Toolset. Let's take a look at that. Uh, here's you know, our first exposure to Event Master Toolset. So we're just going to give you a really, really, really quick tour of it, and then we're going to move right into BIOS. So on the left-hand side here, we have our six buttons. We have our configuration button, our programming button, uh, the Q button, the multi-viewer, the controller, and the settings. We're not really going to dive too deep into some of those buttons, but we may... Uh, dive into the to the configuration and programming button. We have our save button down here at the bottom left. Make sure to click that a bunch of times like I just did. We have our discovered tab where we'll have all the, our discovered units. Now what you'll see here is two units. One is the demo E2 that I'm going to be performing the setup on. The other one is a stream E2 which um, my buddy Mike Pritchard in the room here is operating uh, and doing a fantastic job so we'd like to thank him for uh, for, for providing support today. So I'm going to take this demo E2, I'm going to drag it right into this drop zone that says drag and drop system into the from the discovered tab into the, or manually into the IP address. So maybe we didn't see them in the discovered tab, we could potentially just drag it or we could uh, type in the IP address and hit enter or hit add system and it would add the system to our, to our little deal here. So we have the detail view, we have the VPU resource, we have multi-operators, some things we're not going to talk about, but I just want to show you those tabs are there. We can rename the, the E2 if I want to, I could zoom out, I could zoom in, I can add an additional system, say I wanted to take that other stream E2 and make some adjustments to it. Speaking of adjustments over here across the top, we have our adjust tab, or also known as the contextual adjust tab. That's, that tab actually changes context uh, of its contents based upon where you click. So if we click an output, it gives us a different context than if we click an input or if we click the banner, right? So it's, it's an ever evolving tab. It's an ever contextually adjustable tab or contextually adjusting tab. And we call it that, we call it the contextual adjust tab. And it's important that it's, and it's always anchored in the top right. So, so we really want to pay attention to that. All right, so uh, we have our destination tab, our output tab, our multi-viewer tab, our input tab, our background tab, so on and so forth. Well. Uh, we have our background tab here. We want to create two backgrounds according to our setup. Uh, so we want to create a side screen setup, a side screen background, and a widescreen background, right? So uh, we need to create two of them. Now let's go ahead and create. I'm going to grab one of these dead inputs and hit add single background. So if we take a look at the background and go to the contextual adjust tab, we can rename it here. So we'll call it the side screen. Now by default, everything we create in Event Master is set to, 19, uh, is set to single link and 1920 by 1080 at 5994 because that's kind of like the most common. Now you can adjust the system native rate down here at the bottom. 
uh, or you can uh, you know, adjust the actual resolution of, uh, of the EDID um, to change over, and we're gonna do that on the next step, but I'll show you, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, so we, we've renamed this background to uh, side screen. So we'll go back into our background tab. We'll select a second spigot. I know this is my, my wide MacBook Pro, so I'm gonna hit add single background. Now, if I had s multiple backgrounds that I wanted to bring in at the same time, I could hit add multiple backgrounds, but I don't. So I'm just gonna select this one. I'm gonna call this one wide uh, Mac. Oh, you know what, let me call it uh, uh, 3840 background. Okay, 3840 background, we'll go to the contextual adjust tab. Now, by default, this is live hooked up to a, to a, pro, to a, a MacBook Pro. Uh, this it comes in as 1920 by 1080 because that's what the EDID is set to. But what I really wanna do is set it to 3840 by 1080. But in order to do that, I actually have to adjust the capacity on it. So I'll select the capacity, the connector capacity, and select dual link. Now I could have done that before I created the background, but um, it's possible to do it both before and after you create the background as long as you have the appropriate capacity on that card available. All right, so we've set it to dual link. Now let's go down, let's pick out our dual link resolution. So we should see it down here, 3840 by 1080. And we'll hit apply. And you'll see the current went from 1920 by 1080 to 3840 by 1080. And we see uh, our actual um, input it went invalid for a second. Now, one of the things I have to do is I actually have to go over there real quick and um, uh, adjust the display resolution to adhere to that 3840 by 1080p uh, EDID that I sent to it. So I'm going to put you on hold for just one second while I walk over there and adjust it. Okay, so I'm back, and as you can see, uh, the format status went to 3840 by 1080 automatically, right? Because I went over and I adjusted the output, and we'll see that later on. I'll show you that in the multi-view after I build it. Um, okay, so we've created our two backgrounds, and you'll notice that there's th actually three different colors that are happening here. We have a yellow, we have a red, and we have a green. Those are indications of the status of the basically the input spigot, right? So yellow means there's a signal coming in, but there's nothing assigned to it. Red means that there is uh, no signal attached to it, even though the box think there's, thinks there's supposed to be one. And then green means that they know that there's a signal coming in and they know that we're gonna utilize that input later on, right? Okay, so uh, what's next? Well, we save, save after every step, right? But let's take a look at BIOS one more time. So we got backgrounds, uh, inputs, outputs, screens, and save. So uh, we, next we wanna do our inputs, right? Well, we've got a couple of inputs here. We've actually got uh, four live inputs and we're, you know, we're gonna create a couple of others. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna select it and hit add single input, or we can select multiple and hit add multiple and it'll create a file for each one of those. Now, by default, if we take a look at them, they're gonna actually show what the inputs are coming in, right? Or Again, by default, they'll come in as 1080p, right? Meaning, you know, you can set up your inputs before you have them connected because you know that somebody may be unloading the truck and they're going to set up the source later on, but you know you're going to plug it into a specific spigot so you can call out that specific spigot and set it up for it. Okay, so we've got our inputs set up. Um, I'm going to go back and change them, so, or change the names of them real quick. So we'll call this one um, GRFX1. Uh, playback one, we'll call this one um, VT one and miscellaneous input and then a camera, right? So cam one. All right, so we have our input set up. They're all, you know, if we take a look at the adjust tab, they're all bringing in on their native resolutions. All right, so we take a look at our camera, 1080i, beautiful, perfect. All right, we're good to go over there. So then uh, let's take a look at our uh, next step, which is uh, outputs. But before we move on to outputs, we've got to save, right? So we'll save, that, save all those inputs, and we'll go on to our outputs. Now, if we take a look at our setup real quick, if we take a look at the slide for our setup real quick, then we'll see we have a widescreen, 
a side screen, and an aux destination, which is a total of four physical outputs. Two for the wide screen, one for the side screen, and one for the aux destination. So if we go back to Event Master Toolset, we could set up our four outputs just like we set up our inputs. Um, one, of, one of the rules that we kind of like to, to throw at new users is to split them up, split up the destinations on different cards. So let's do maybe screen destinations on one card and aux destinations on another, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add these three screen destinations by selecting them. And just like we did with the multiple inputs, we're going to select add multiple outputs. And we'll select, uh, we'll grab the left one here. And we'll grab this one and we know that's going to be my wide left. By the way, we're going to run a little bit over time. Sorry about that. Wide right. And then we're going to do our side screen. All right. And then we're going to select this one and hit add single output. And we'll call this one our uh, DSM, OK, downstage monitor. All right. So we have our wide left, wide right, side screen, DSM. We know that they're all, def by default, they set, they're set up to be 1920 by 1080 there. So we're, we're pretty good there. So we have our outputs built. We're good to go. So I'm going to hit the Save button. And uh, we're going to move on. So um, we've created our backgrounds. We've created our inputs. We've created our outputs. Now it's time to create our uh, destinations. So uh, let's create our, our screen destinations after we save and save again by going to the Destination tab. We'll select a destination and hit Add Screen Destination. Now, by default, it goes to one output, right? Because we had selected that one output. It goes to one output, 1920 by, 1920 by 1080 at 5994 with zero layers associated with it. So let's just change the name real quick. We'll call this one the widescreen. And then let's add the second output to make it a true widescreen. So it's two outputs at 1920 by 1080, right? So it's two outputs at 3840 by 1080, excuse me, at 5994. And let's add some layers to that, right? So we'll select the destination. We'll scroll down, and we'll add three layers to that, OK? So. Uh, after we've added the three layers, we can start our data double process where we'll go into the wide. I'm not going to go into too much explanation on this, um, but we're going we're to use this little explodey button right here on the right. We're going to select the portion, and we're going to go into data double. We're going to select the portion in which we'd like to data double and establish our data double value, which is 600, right? 3840 by 1080, uh, less the 600 is 3240 by 1080, like we talked about earlier. And we're going to offset that so they're center justified on that canvas. Okay, so here we are offsetting it. And so we'll, we'll just assign the offset value to 300, which is going to center that, uh, that data double into our canvas space. So this black area is our canvas space with our outputs observing it, right? Now, we can go into the feathering. We could actually do the feathering here in the E2, or you could do it at the projector. And there's a whole argument that we could get into about which one's better. Uh, but it breaks down, you know, the, the ultimate argument breaks down to whether it's, um, you know, the, the transmission method of the cable you're using versus what's available in the projector. So we're just going to show you how to do it here in the Event Master Toolset if you choose Event Master Toolset, which is fantastic feathering. It's a 12-bit internal feather. Uh, so it's awesome. So you'll select the left side of the right and the right side of the left. Those are your two feather, feather regions. So they, they go from 0 to 100 and 0 to, or 100 to 0. We'll enable the feather and then we'll add a 600 pixel feather. So there we have it. We're actually kind of done with this. We'll close down the splody view. We have our widescreen destination, two outputs, three layers. It's, it's data doubled. It's good to go. So we'll select our side screen. We'll go back to the destination tab. We'll hit add screen destination. We'll call this one side screen. We'll go into the contextual adjust tab. Let's add a couple of layers to it right off the bat. We know it's a 1920 by 1080 because that's what the output was set was set to, so we're actually good there. We can move on. All right, and then the aux will go to the destination tab, and we'll select the physical aux here, and we'll hit add aux destination. You'll see it differenti differentiates itself. Uh, so we'll go to the aux destination, and we'll rename it uh, DSM to match the physical output that we renamed. And I'm not going to get too far into it, but we're going to set the aux capacity uh, to accept dual link resolutions, so we could take in the background and scale it to the, to the aux capacity, the aux output, or we could take the destination composition and scale it down and send it out of the aux output if we set it to dual link because of the, it needs to be able to receive dual link and those two items are dual link, de, uh, dual link capacity. So that's it for, um, for the setup and configuration. So 
uh, we're going to go into the multi view tab over here, the multi view button. So as I click on this multi view button, um, we should see the programming interface for our multi viewer. All right, so over here on the left, we have the input tab where we see all of our inputs that are coming in. We have our background tab where we see all of our backgrounds coming in. We have the destination tab uh, where we see all of our destinations, both the program canvas and the physical outputs. We're not going to talk about that though. Across the top here, we have our multi viewers. We have multi view one, multi view two, three, and four. Because we are using a generation two card, it gives us four discrete multi viewers. Remember, we talked about that. So here they are represented um, as, a, as a little canvases, right? So we have our four discrete multi viewers. We can view all, or we can kind of zoom in and and look at one specifically or two specifically or so on and so forth. We can zoom out and see the canvas there. We can zoom in to get a little bit more detailed view, uh, but we'll sit it down right at 100. And because we're only gonna be using one multi-view today, we're just gonna switch over to multi-view one and kind of pay attention to that one. So it's super simple to start building your multi-view. You go to your input tab, you drag and drop your input. You can expand it. Make it smaller, take some more inputs in, right? We can go and drag all of our inputs in. Okay, our miscellaneous, that was a dead one, remember that? And then we have our camera, okay? So we have our camera set up here. We can set these aside, you know, we can, we can start building a cohesive look, or uh, we can go into our auto layout input and automatically take all of our inputs and lay them out, right, in a nice clean view. We also have tools down below to help us, uh, if, say if something gets knocked off kilter and we wanna, wanna readjust it and, and make it look all nice and pretty, we can do that. I'll get to those in just a sec. So let's take a look at our background here. Let's take a look at our ba wide background graphic. Uh, we, can, we can size it, and if we go to the contextual adjust tab here, we can actually size it here manually. We can change the horizontal position as well as the vertical position. Or if you're new to Event Master, or I'm sorry, if you're an experienced user in Event Master, uh, you, we used to have custom sizes or um, pre-canned sizes, but now we have these custom sizes that you can build and create and, and edit. So let's say I wanted to make uh, every input this size, so I would select it and I would select a custom size and I would hit overwrite size. Maybe I could rename it if I wanted to this size. And then I can take it and apply it to other uh, is by selecting it, selecting the window and hit apply custom size and you'll notice that they're now the same size, right? So I can, I can you know, uh, replicate the sizes across. Instead of having the pre-canned customs like the, maybe the uh, ori you know, original users are used to seeing. Um, the window size, we're not gonna really talk about, that's actually a, a future, uh, future uh, feature that's coming. So UMD text, we can change the UMD text, say on graphics one to this UMD. UMD stands for under monitor display, so that would be this little UMD text right here. Or we can reset the UMD. Now if we do change the UMD text, it doesn't actually change the text of the input, it just changes the text of the input, of the, uh, excuse me, changes the text of the UMD. So for this guy right here, for this cam, we could change it to like Jeff's cam, right? Or we can reset it back to cam, cam one, cam whatever. So if we take a look at the output colors tab, the output colors tab is great, so we specify multi-viewer number one. We can change the color of the borders. We can change the color of uh, the UMD itself, right? So if we, if we take a look at uh, the multi-viewer, the demo multi-viewer output, right? Um, we can see these, these changes happening on the multi-viewer in real time. Right, so uh, here we have, we can change the background. So we go to the background and I can change the background to like a nice barco red to match my, um, or we can go to blue or green or white or black, right? We can get, you know, we can start to customize our interface essentially. And so we see our uh, actual multi-view. Uh, I'm actually gonna start over again real quick. I'm gonna hit the auto layout input and we'll watch it, watch it just re, you know, reset it. And we can drag in our backgrounds so let's, uh, or let's, our background's already there, excuse me. We can drag in our destinations. So let's start dragging in our destinations. And let's, you know, make those a little bit larger or maybe a little bit smaller. And you'll see that the, 
the preview and program are kind of tied together because those are the screen destinations, the screen canvases. So we'll take the side screen, we'll make that one a little bit larger. We'll take the preview for that side screen and we'll take the DSM. Now, uh, you know, by default, sometimes I get a little lazy and I just drag them in and I go, oh, you know what, I, I want to make this prettier. I can either eyeball it out, right, and hope that the snap works, which we don't actually have a snap built in. It just kind of automatically um, drags into those, uh, to those areas, okay. Uh, or I could go down below and use our window modification buttons. And those window modification buttons are, are very helpful. So we could do, say, multiple select and we can select these two or uh, say these four, and we can move them up and down, right, and move them all around, okay? Now, uh, let's say, you know, uh, well, I wanted to align them all back to where they were up top. Well, I would select all of these and use our align relative buttons so I can write align relative top, or I can align distribute horizontally, which will then distribute them all evenly horizontally. So I can do that same to uh, select the multi-viewer, unselect all. I can do the same to these two here, and then align relative. Or I can use align absolute, which sends them to the edge of the screen. Okay, so I can align relative. Um, I can select these two, and then deselect these two, align relative, take them, drag them over, and then do, say, these two, and align relative top, take select these two, select these two, and align relative bottom. And there we have, you know, all four of these windows nice and clean. We could drag that one in. We'll unselect all of them, take this guy right here. So we have a little bit of a cleaner multi-view. Now, you might say, well, hold up. I want to make this side screen a little bit bigger, you know, so I, I want to drag and, you know, just make it a little bit larger. Well, as we do that, we'll notice this little error at the bottom it says overlapping windows not allowed because we're trying to overlap onto that DSM window, right? So there are no overlaps allowed in your multi-view. Okay, so we'll turn multi-select off. So as we move that DSM, you'll notice that we're able to get a little bit bigger and release. Now you can overlap the, the UMD text. So, you, you know, it's possible to overlap a little bit of the window, that also known as the UMD text. Uh, but it's, once you try to encroach upon that original windows, um, a uh, little window, it stops you, okay? The other side to this is if you hang off the canvas, you'll notice it goes crosshatch. <clears throat> That's because it's, we're, we don't allow you to have a, a canvas window or an input window hanging off of the, uh, off of the programming screen, right? Off of the multi-view screen. You've got to be careful there. You can turn on the border. You can turn off the border. Uh, so if we take a look at um, select all, border off inside of the multi-viewer there, right inside of the multi-viewer there <laughs> um, you can see the border turning on turning off you can do the yes yes it is multi-viewer is on it's great you could turn off the umd text you could turn on the umd text you can turn off the aoi markers also known as area of interest markers if you want to learn what those actually are tune into our our uh, future classes where we're going to talk about um, ip for led you could do the auto layout input, which we already talked about. You could do the auto layout destination, which you can imagine will uh, destroy everything and, and, uh, and allow us to um, or automatically add all the, the destinations first before it adds the inputs. All right, so that's multi-view in a nutshell. As you can see, it's a pretty powerful tool. We'll reference back to it later on when we, um, as we create these, uh, these outputs, right, as, we're, as we start to work on in these programming screens. So let's make this one a little bit bigger before we move on uh, so we can see that when we come back. And I want to turn on my, uh, I want to turn on my AOI markers. Okay. On all of them, AOI markers. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the programming section. We're going to take a look at the programming section. Now, the programming section is where all the magic happens, right? It's where you create all of your image compositions to be utilized um, in your show or in your setup or in your uh, facility or wherever you're using this event master processor, right? Because it's not just driven towards live events. It's also driven towards permanent installs type stuff. 
So this is, like I said, this is where you create your composition. So I'm going to give you a nice tour of this um, and then go through some individual features and create these presets that allow us to, to recall later to, uh, you know, on maybe on our controller or through an external software or whatever, and, uh, whatever you may be using. So across the left-hand side, we have the input tab and we have the native background tab. The input tab, if you drag a source from here or you drag an input from here, it goes to the scalers. If you drag an input source or, or input from the native background, it, uh, it will actually uh, go to the native background. Okay, so um, it will then uh, not use any of the scalers. It'll go to that native side. So we could use still stores, we could use live inputs, or uh, we could go in and use mats. It's not found in the tab. The mats are found somewhere else. I'll show you. Maybe I'll show you later. Okay, so let's go to the input tab because this is where we're going to drag all of our sources from for the scalers and we will talk about the different types of inputs that you can use. You can use actual inputs, which utilize sources. You can use stills, you can use backgrounds as sources, you can use multi, the multi-view as a source, and later maybe in a new, new, uh, new software that's coming out, like 7.1 or so. Uh, or you can use destinations as sources as well, so you could even do a sub-switching of a pip, right? Uh, where you create a, a side screen destination, you switch inside of that pip, but you use that side screen as a window inside of your widescreen. Maybe I'll show you how to do that if we have time. Uh, we can go into list view or thumbnail view. Thumbnail view gives us a sweet thumbnail view where we can add thumbnails. I have them already on my computer, so I'm going to add a few. In fact, I'm going to ask, uh, ask for your, your forgiveness here while I just go through and add a couple so we can make this look a little bit more seamless. So I'm going to add graphics, let's go with a playback, uh, let's go with a VT1, VTA, how about that, and we'll do a miscellaneous or misc, call that demo one. And then we'll look at the cam. Now these are not uh, constantly updating thumbnails, so you got to be careful there. Don't trick yourself. Uh, but what you can do is you can add a still from the input. So if we select this refresh thumbnail, uh, what it'll do is it'll grab a still from the input and assign it to the still. Uh, inside of that input, you can freeze it. There's three levels of freeze. You have freeze at the input. You have freeze at the layer. You have freeze at the output. Okay, or the destination, I should say, the destination level. Uh, we could take a still from there, or we can add a source, add a new source. We're not going to talk about the source stuff really at all in this introductory course, um, but if you want to come see us, take one of the classes, I'd be happy to show you uh, input, inputs, versus, inputs versus sources, or you can check out um, Evolve did a, did a fantastic uh, explanation of inputs versus sources a couple of weeks back. Um, they, did a, they did a great job explaining that. You could take in stills, so I can add a new still from PNG locally, or this is where I would see the list of stills that I captured from, uh, from my, like let's say my camera, right? So I'll go back into my stills and I took a still from my camera. Here it is, 1920 by 1080. It is a progressive frame, even though it was interlaced. It just takes a photo of whatever, whatever it basically takes a photo of whatever the input was coming into the input at the time. All right, so here it is, there's my still. I could use my backgrounds as sources like we talked about earlier where I could scale them up or down, but we're not gonna get into that. Or I could use my destination. So here we have our inputs, okay? We have, our, we have basically all of our inputs coming into the box. We have our programming section. So we have program up at the top, preview at the bottom. Uh, if we take a look at each one of these, we could zoom out, we could zoom in, right? We can enable or disable them for transition. So that's how we specify which one we want to enable or disable. Uh, we have the lock to stop us from, alt from uh, altering it while it's alive on program, because this would be your program section, this would be your preview. So uh, we have the, you know, down below we have the freeze destination outputs. Again, that's with a layer of freeze. We can lock or unlock all of our destinations. We can select or deselect all of our destinations for transition or record into a preset. We can turn on our AOI or area of interest markers or turn them off. We can do multiple layouts. So um, up above here we have our options on which destination we want to really dive deep into, right? So if I select one of these and like say the widescreen, I can 
uh, just focus on the widescreen or if I just want to focus on the side screen or the DSM. But you got to remember when you focus in on these, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So if the widescreen is armed or the widescreen is enabled for a transition and I go over to the side screen, that widescreen is still enabled for transition over on the other view. It's just not viewable, right? It's just not visible. So we can also shift these around and make these a little, you know, make these a little bit easier to, dig to digest uh, when we hit the view all button, right? So, you know, let's say we want to make a specific layout where we only see the widescreen and the side screen as opposed to seeing either one or all. We can take and drag and drop the widescreen and the side screen into one of these layouts and select it. And here is our wide screen, wide screen and our side screen. Okay, so we'll go to view all, right? We see all three of them or we go to layout. Or maybe we want to do a layout where we see our DSM and our side screen. So I'll select layout number two and here's our side screen and DSM. I can even change the name of these layouts if I want to, right, to, to differentiate the two. Okay, so I can change the names of those layouts. Those layout's a pretty, pretty awesome little tool. Um, I'll probably recall the layout number one later on. Over across the right-hand side, we have our adjustment tab, that sneaky little adjustment tab. Now it doesn't have anything to adjust, so it's kind of laying dormant. Uh, we have our layers tab where we could see all of our layers for our different destinations and whether they're on preview or they're on program or whatnot. So let's take a look at the widescreen. They're both not being utilized right now, so they're yellow. If they were on preview, uh, then they would be uh, green. If they were on program, they would be red. Actually, let's take a look at that. So let's take a look at uh, layer one. And let's drop it into, um, oh, sorry, wide screen, side screen. Okay, I want to go into side screen. Let's take a look at layer one, go to the side screen. And here we have our layer, right? So here we have our layer. It's in preview right now, so we won't see it on program. Uh, it's a single link. It's layer number one. It does not have a source associated to it, and it is a pip with a mix, right? So it gives us some information of it, right? It gives us some information. Uh, so how do we get the source into that layer? How do we get an input into that layer? Well, you simply drag and drop the input in, right? And there it is. Let's use the camera. How about that? We'll use the camera there, okay? So we have our camera here. There's our sanitation wipes for social distancing and cleaning all of the equipment as we've been using it, right? Uh, before it changes hands in the of, a, of our uh, operators here in room. So uh, we have a uh, camera that we want to send to program. Well, how do we do it? We make sure that the uh, side screen here is enabled and we just hit the all transition, right? Or the side screen is enabled for transition and we hit the all transition button. And so you'll see it on our multi-view if we switch over to our multi-view, you'll see it in our preview and our program. All right? So there's our preview, there's our program. And here it is live on program, so if we move it here, there's our program. So we'll just, we'll just take a look at the, the, the multi-view exclusively. Or, you know. uh, so here is our side screen with our uh, preview and program. Now I want to lock that back up and I don't want to touch it or move it or do anything like that. So. Um, Essentially, what we're going to do is, is make adjustments in our preview and then hit all trans. So we'll take like playback one or graphics one and we'll transition it to program, right? Make a move or a, move it over, resize it, maybe make it full screen, transition it to program, and you'll see it happening there in our multi view, right? Okay, so. Uh, let's switch it over to camera and then hit all trans. It's, very, it's really that simple. You take an input, you drag it into a layer, uh, and then you're on your, on your way. Now, you might say, well, hold on now. What if I want to make, what if I want to add another layer? Or what if I don't want to grab a layer from the layer tab and then add an input to it? Well, you could simply drag an input in and it will grab the first available layer. It will grab the first available layer and transition that and, and allow it to transition to screen, right? So you'll see that layer two here is superseding layer one or on top of layer one, or our Z order goes layer one is the furthest away from you, right? So layer one being the furthest away from you, and then layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven, so on and so forth, okay? 
So layer two is going to sit over the top of layer one. We can actually um, adjust the Z order if we want to, uh, but we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, across the right-hand side, we have the destination group, which we're not going to really go into. Uh, we have the user key tab. The user key tab is great. The user, so user keys um, essentially allow us to record uh, what we call, um, or what some people call treatments of a window or of a layer, right? So it's attributes that uh, we can pre-select and record to be recalled later to uh, one or many layers. So let's take a look at uh, VTA here. And we'll go with, um, uh, you know, I really like the size and position of that. And I really like the size and position of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my user key tab. I'm going to deselect everything except for position and size. And I'm going to save it as a new user key. And I'll call this one uh, top left medium. Eh, we'll call that small. Okay. So we got our small there. And... Uh, uh, what we'll do is we'll actually um, uh, bring in another layer, like our camera, and you say, you know what, maybe I'll move that one out of the way, and I want to go ahead and take my uh, take those attributes that I had saved into top left small and apply them to that camera. I'll simply drag and drop, and it snaps in there. And I can do that with any layer that I bring into that destination. Okay, so it's pretty cool. You know, you can um, you can save attributes, position, size, source. What its mask, the status of its mask, the border, shadow, the key, everything, right? So you might ask, but Vince, how do I adjust those things? Like, how do I add a border? How do I add a shadow? How do I adjust the mask? Well, it's as simple as going into the, select, sorry, selecting the layer and going into the contextual adjust tab. And here's where you'll see all of the awesome adjustments that you can make to your layers. So we have the layer type, whether it's a pip or a key. Right, we have the uh, add keyframe where, where we'll talk about moves. Maybe we'll go over moves if we have time. Uh, we can go into the uh, layer main where we can add our border or our shadow. So we could turn on the border, we could turn on the shadow. Right, maybe we want to t do a shadow and we want to do it uh, blue shadow instead. Right? So you'll see inside of our multi viewer. Inside of our multi viewer, you can see the blue border, the, the, the gray border with the blue shadow on it, right? Or a white shadow, maybe you want to do a white shadow to it. And we can make all the adjustments to those, or we can turn them off because if a border and shadow isn't done correctly, it doesn't look great. Right? We all know that, right? we've all seen that. So um, let's ditch the border shadow. Maybe we want to go in and do a mask. Well, we'd go into the window adjustment. Inside the window adjustment, we can adjust the size. Right, we can adjust the, the size of the window. Whoa, oh, there we go. We can adjust the size of the window. We can adjust the position of the window. Now these are very, very touchy controls, which is why we give you the plus and minus or the ability to type in or the ability to even reset, right? You can reset it back to zero, zero, the center, okay? With at, a, at a specified size pre-specified size. Or here's where you can adjust your mask. Right, so we can start masking off our layers. Now this happens at the layer level. It doesn't happen at the source level. It doesn't happen at the input level. It doesn't happen at the output level. These adjustments, when the contextual adjust tab is focused in on the layer, will happen at the layer level. Okay, so let's reset everything. Uh, reset everything, everything, and, uh, and move on. Okay, so we can make those adjustments and then we can go into our user key tab and select the adjustments that we want to observe and apply to something else to apply to another layer and save those, right? So it's very, uh, it's quite an awesome little, um, uh, quite an awesome little feature. All right, uh, user keys, super useful when you start talking about controllers. Maybe if we have time, we'll, we'll work on, uh, we have about 20 minutes left, 20, 30 minutes left. We'll talk about, maybe we talk about programming a controller or something like that. Um, so. Those user keys are super awesome for programming. They make life so much easier, especially if you're working in the LED workflow and you, know, you have specified screen sizes for your LED that you didn't carve out inside of your AOI or you want to always automatically drop something. You, know. um, you can even bind those user keys to sources, uh, which we're not going to talk about. Just let that kind of flow over you. If you don't understand it, come see us at one of our classes. We'll show you how to bind a user key to a source. Okay, so. 
and deselect everything and we'll move on. All right, let's go to the preset tab. So if we take a look at the preset tab and we go to the view all, right? Um, the preset tab, uh, essentially, if it's set to a, com I'm sorry, the preset tab, if it's set to complete, essentially what it does is it takes a snapshot of all of the destinations, their status, and if they're highlighted for transition or selected for transition, it will actually take a snapshot of that destination and all of the layers that are inside of that destination. So let me show you a quick, uh, quick example of that. Let's go ahead and let's um, use, uh, let's drag in VTA over here. We'll make a quick, quick, uh, quick look here. Maybe not the, the uh, best of all um, looks. Let's go with VTA, all right? Um, We'll just kind of build it out real quick on the rough cut. You know, we can go back into the contextual adjust tab and get more fi finite and uh, more accurate settings or uh, positions for these layers if we really wanted to, but we don't. We're just doing a little rough in. And then let's do a camera on the side with, uh, with a little VT in the bottom right-hand corner or maybe a little graphics in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do a graphics in the downstage monitor. So now every one of these destinations is selected Ooh, uh, you know what let's go ahead and add the live background too right it's because we have the native background let's add that go to the native background tab and drop in that background and we'll see that native background right here in our in our multi view right see there in our multi view great so we see it in our multi view uh, so if we take a look at uh, those those you know we, we can recall that later right by creating a preset so let's go to the preset tab and let's save from preview because we want to save from the preview section. Or we could save from program even though there's nothing on program. So let's save from preview. I don't want to say nothing, but there's not really much going on on program. And let's just call this look number one. Now let's say we wanted to transition to a different look quickly. How would we do that? Well, we create a second look or a second preset to, uh, uh, to transition to. So let's clear out. Let's actually, maybe let's go back to the inputs. And let's make these sides, make, maybe make them cameras. And let's make the native background by selecting the background here, the background tab here, and going to the contextual adjust tab. Let's make the background a matte red. Okay, so we have a matte red there. And then we'll do, um, we'll go and select the camera. We'll clear that out. We'll use graphics to full screen. And then we'll select um, playback one for the downstage monitor, right? So for this one, if we select it, we go to the preset tab and we hit save from preview, it will basically record everything that's in our preview. So we'll save from preview and we'll call this one look two. So if we're in our preset tab, we have a couple of options. We're only gonna show you complete, not relative today, there, although there is a video on relative presets that uh, Tim and I did with Evolve Media. Uh, and and uh, you can go check that out. It's also on the Bar Barco Folsom IP. Uh, we can override it if we selected it. We can override it from preview. We can override it from program. We can delete it. We can enable a reorder. We can lock them all. We can unlock them all. If we lock them all, it obviously stops us from overriding them or changing the name of them. Uh, we can unlock them all to where we change the name or we can change the number as well. And then we have creation options. I'm not going to really go into that. Uh, so we could select it, say select a preset and hit recall current. And you'll see that it recalls that preset that we had made earlier, right? So it recalls that preset that we made earlier. Or we can hit recall look two. Now these are ready for transition because they sit in our preview. So watch me, watch what happens when I transition them from preview to program, right? Inside of our multi-view there, you can see it transition from preview to program. So we'll recall, hit all trans, recall, hit all trans, and you can see them transitioning, right? Seem, nice seamless dissolve from transition from A to B. All right, so you might say, okay, well, that's a three-step process. That's well, fine and dandy, but what happens if I want to do it just a little bit quicker? Well, uh, one of the things we could do is change the, way we, change the way we recall the preset. Like I can change the preset by selecting, by selecting one, dragging and dropping it in, and releasing, right? And, and that'll, that'll automatically uh, change the preset. Or... I could select the thumbnail view and just recall them quickly by selecting the thumbnail. 
So there we have a very quick switch between presets, right? And we can even take that one step further and we can say instead of, it instead of recalling the preset to preview, we re recall the preset to program. See how everything turns red? So if we select the preset, it'll recall the program, right? So we have our, our preset to program. And then we have our, uh, finally we have our queue page, but we're not gonna really talk about the queue page, so we're, we're, we're gonna skip over that. Um, let's go back, I'll tell you what, let's reset back to preview and let's go back to list view um, and where we can then, uh, where we can then, you know, re, re, no, rename, reorder, uh, reorder, do the whole deal, okay? So across the bottom, we've got some creature features for our operators, right? Like um, we have the multiple select on, multiple select off, so we can multiple select layers, right, and move them around. We can unselect, we could select all and unselect all. So maybe if we want to do a clear all, we could select all and hit clear, and it would clear all of our uh, destinations, our layers, and our backgrounds, the whole deal, right? It clears everything where we transition, and now we're at black, okay? Um, we could do a match program. So let's say we transition to screen, and I wanted to uh, take these two pips here, and I hit match program, you'll see that they match the actual program. We can unselect all. Uh, let's turn off our multiple select, but let's select one. We could do a toggle or swap, not gonna get into what that does or how that works. Uh, we could do a freeze. We could do a clear, right? So I could select it, I could hit clear, or I could select it and I could hit freeze. Again, that's one of the three places you can freeze. Again, at the input, the layer level, and the um, uh, the layer level and at the destination level. I can do a transition if, if I'm not frozen, right? I can unfreeze it. If I can do a transition of just one layer, even though all of my screen destinations are selected and ready for transition, I can do a, a, a transition of just one layer if I wanted to. Oh, excuse me. Let's go with the miscellaneous, right? So a little black, just solid black input. Uh, if I hit the, if I select it and hold it and hit all trans, you'll notice that only that layer made a transition. Only that layer made a transition, right? So I have a layer transition as opposed to an all transition. So I can start to specify which layers I want to transition. I have a uh, fill, hor fill vertical, a fill horizontal. You'll notice that if we fill the vertical, it maintains aspect ratio filling it vertically. If we fill horizontal, it, uh, it maintains the aspect, uh, aspect ratio and fills horizontally. And we have a fill HV, which will destroy aspect ratio. So if we took in, say, camera one, you'll notice it specifically in camera one. If we go fill HV, it destroys the aspect ratio, but it does fill it horizontally and vertically. So technically, it's, it works. So if we were in, say, graphics one here, or if we were in side screen here and we did fill HV, because it is the same aspect ratio, it doesn't you know, it doesn't alter the aspect ratio of it. It doesn't destroy the aspect ratio because it's filling horizontally, filling vertical 16 by nine on a 16 by nine. Don't fear though, if, in, if, you, if you do fill HV, you can always fill vertical, fill horizontal to restore the aspect ratio, or you can hit the reset button and the reset button will reset the aspect ratio and allow you to, uh, you know, scale it up and down, move it around, okay? More creature features here on the left-hand side. We have a line absolute left, a line absolute right. We have the same features. Let's take a look at the widescreen here specifically. We have the same features that we saw earlier inside of our multi-view tab where uh, we can take and we can do a multiple select on, select multiples, and then do align relative top. We can do, uh, say, align relative bottom. We can do align absolute bottom. We can do align absolute top. We can even do align absolute right or left. And what that's going to do is that will align them absolute right or left. Right? So let's multiple select on again and then do line. But because we can overlap, you can see how easy it is to overlap them. Right? And we can overlap with these pips to create these compositions. So you can see how easy it is to lose those pips uh, behind each other. In fact, if you're paying attention, I recorded a preset earlier where I had a a layer full screen on top of another layer. That's kind of a faux pas. It's a little bit, a little bit of a Bush League maneuver, but you know, um, it's possible to layer pips, and that's the point of it too, right? And 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 you know, I, it might have been a might have been a small mistake on my part, but I want to show you that it's still possible to do because we 
we don't allow just why, you know, one screen switching in, switching out. We allow that composition and we allow you the ability to do that composition. That's important too because later on if you do pips with keys on them or, uh, you know, you want to do layering and, and, and window pipping, right? So you, maybe you have a backdrop where you show brick windows and inside of those windows you want to put live inputs into those windows. So you can, you can utilize the masking to mask off to those windows and assign them and layer them over the top of others, right, to create um, ultimate, these, these looks ultimately, right? And that is the beauty of Event Master Toolset. That's the beauty of the E2S3 uh, Image Pro line is that we allow you to do all of this stuff in ultra low latency, you know, high definition and UHD, we hit all the buzzwords, right? We hit the 444 internal processing. We hit the 12-bit internal processing. It's up to the, to the user to get uh, 8 and 10, 12-bit in and out of it, right? Um, so we do all this, again, at ultra low latency, about a frame to a frame and a half, depending on the route you take to, it actually could be subframe, depending on the route you take through our, our, our box, right, as opposed to a media server, you know, where a media server has to process everything and could add um, extra frames to, to the output that are unnecessary, right? So um, I think we have a few more minutes. Uh, I'm going to show you how to program the controller real quick uh, using our, uh, our little our event master tool set. So uh, I've created a couple of presets. I have at least one user key. Let's create a second one so we can we can see some um, we can see a, you know some changes here, uh, some changes happening here. So let's focus in on the widescreen. Let's take um, and maybe on the widescreen. I really like the way that this pip sits. So I'll do position uh, unselect everything. Oops, excuse me. Unselect everything and then select position and size. And I'll save this one as a new user key. I'll call this one. Uh, left left maybe I'll clear this out I'll go in and I'll call this one right all right so um, I've got a couple of user keys that I can assign I've got a couple of presets I've got my destination set up good 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 all right, so if I go into the controller, uh, I have the option because I'm in a virtual, or because I don't have a physical controller hooked up to my uh, computer, I have the option to either choose a, the programming for an EC30 or an EC50. Maybe I know an EC50 is coming later, uh, so I'm going to pre-program for that. So once I plug it in, it automatically just takes these settings and drops them right onto my EC50, right? So uh, it's actually really simple. You can go to your uh, destinations. Select your widescreen, drag it in. There's your destination button. There's your side screen button. Uh, we have our auxiliaries like our DSM. I can drag it there. I can even, you know, drop it into multiple positions. I can arm or disarm those, or, or not arm or disarm. Excuse me. I can select for transition or, or deselect for transition those. So right now they're all deselected. See that? So if I go into my programming tab, they're all deselected. If I hit view all, they're all deselected. If I go back into my controller here, I can select them all and we'll see in our programming that they're all selected for transition now. It's the same, you know, uh, same thought process as maybe hitting the all unlock, um, select all, deselect all, and you'll see that reflect in your controller. So when I, I can, uh, my layers, these are hard buttons, these are, you know, dedicated towards uh, physical layers that are on that destination. So if I deselect my other destinations and I say select layer one, if we go back into our programming tab, um, We'll see in my in my preview here, my layer one is, is selected for, for uh, manipulation. I can go in and I can drop in maybe cues, sources, user keys. Uh, we have a flex bus coming soon. Uh, preview source, program source, so you can use the controller as a preview program uh, switch now, uh, or coming out soon. Um, that's pretty cool. User keys, I could drop in my user keys, so let's do that. So let's select... Uh, user key and we'll go left by just dragging and dropping it and then right. So let's go back and take a look at our programming, right? Let's move our user keys out or let's move our layers out. Uh, select this one, clear this one out. We'll take layer one and we'll go back into our controller. If we select the user key on the programmer, I mean on the, uh, on the controller, we select the left user key. We'll notice that it went to the left side. If we 
uh, go back to our controller, we hit the right user key, you'll notice it shifted over to our right side. In fact, um, let's, uh, let's see, bring up the multi-view real quick. So if I select it to go to left, you could see it in the multi-view go into the left. Uh, if I select it to go to the right, you could see it in the multi-view go into the right. Um, so you could see how you could utilize those user keys very quickly, right, to program. So you select a destination, you select the layer, you select the user key, and it'll perform the action that you want to make. Well, let's say you don't want such granularity. Let's say you wanted to go a little bit more broad, right? Well, we can take and go to the user key, uh, sorry, uh, take the assign bus and go to the preset button. We'll program our presets by selecting a preset and dragging it into the, to the uh, programming area, right? We'll drag it onto the little button. And if, say, we say uh, grab look one, so it'll select look one and recall it. We go look two, uh, select look two and recall it. There's look one again. Here's look two. So you have you know, a control surface that allows you to recall these presets uh, super quickly. Right? Now, there's two sides to a console, basically. You have your programming side. You have your preset recall side. And there's two different ways to set those up. We go through those ways to set those up inside of our classes uh, once we resume them. So please uh, feel free to stop by and, uh, and see us, and, and, and we'll, get you, uh, we'll get you all dialed in on the controller. You know, we do the EC30, EC50 in the classroom. Um, we talk about inputs versus sources. We talk about all the granular details of the VentMaster tool set. We show you how to do keying. We show you how to do uh, uh, moves. We show you how to do moves. We're, we're, we're kind of crunched for time here, so we're going uh, to omit the move um, deal. And that's pretty much it for uh, Event Master Tools, exposure to Event Master Tool Set. Um, I think if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. <laughs> <laughs>